You gotta be spicy. I've been, gotta, I've been thinking about this. You're gonna say some spicy shit? No. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what you need. <laughs> SVG the gang, SVG the cult. My name is Ray. Welcome to the newest episode of the Space Record Podcast. Per usual, I got. Never missed one. Never missed one. It's me. Yo, we're going. Season. We're going Season. hard, though, bro. We're always there. Yeah. Always there. Always there. Always there. We're perfect attendance. We're the only two. Facts, we're perfect attendance. <laughs> that being said, the you can tell. The backbone. Uh, no, well, that chain. Um, <laughs> yo. The backbone of Boston is Shane. Sure, I sure. saw that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, go ahead. Sorry, no Geo today. Um, he's all right. He be not well, serious. He back. He he'll be, be back. back. Yeah. Um, but today we got a special guest with us. Everyone's special. She's very special. Though, I feel like. <laughs> I hate, you feel special? I feel special. That's what's up? <laughs> I'm introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Sasa, <laughs> and um. Do I say like what I am? Whatever you want to say. <laughs> whatever, you, whatever you need to say. Let me just help um, say. Sasa, um, I'm a photographer, studio mm-hmm. owner. Um, I own Sasa Studios and I'm a co-owner of the Friend Street Project, which is like a venue, event space slash uh, media production space. And yeah, and I've actually been, I've been wanting to be on here for mad long, so oh, like, uh, I'm excited. Nah. Nah. Most people don't gas us like that. They say, I mean, it was nice to be asked, I guess. But I saw when <laughs> it started and it was yes, like, yes. so the growth is cool yeah. and like the consistency is cool. So well, like, nah, no, no consistency. Don't lie to um, but no, 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 no. you don't got a lot of. But us. like, if you're doing something like three years later, it's it's. Boring. I mean, okay, yeah, that's fair. consistency. Yeah, um, that's right. But it's only been three years because it's been spread out. <laughs> nah. Let me love you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, in the beginning we had no video. Like first yeah. two episodes we had no video. Those were so chaotic. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> they are so chaotic. They're hilarious. I love them. We though. had just so much they shit to talk hate. about. <laughs> they were it was like just... stream of consciousness. Like yeah. I put in my ears, I was like, where are we going right now? <laughs> yeah, for real. They, you, you really don't know where you're gonna end up in well, the conversation. Like, I think any episode with thoughts is like that. Yeah. In general. But yeah. then like we had Third episode where we had video, then it cut out halfway. We didn't know it cut out halfway. Cute. cute. And then we had, wait, no, third episode we didn't know. But there was a fourth episode. Then finally figured it out. Mm-hmm. And now we, and then we, there's yeah. space for growth. Now there's this there's space for growth. We're going to always what, go back to that. That's what we, <laughs> we will always run it back on space for growth. How are you today? I'm good. Just good? I mean, yeah. I'm a little I'm a little tired. I've been going hard. I just got over a little a little sickness, so if I'm coughing. You just got back from California. Yes. How how was <laughs> That's it? That's not why I got sick. No, but how was it? It's how been was? like a three week cough, but uh Cali was fire. Um I was I was at the the underground raves. I was like, Dear, <laughs> you're doing the <laughs> EDM. Who'd you go to see? Um, who'd you go to see out there? I just saw my partner. She's in Long Beach. Okay. And then um, I have some homies that because I I used to like stay out there, so I have people I've been, been like building friendships with for years. So like, if I'm in town. It's like usually like a week long stint these days, so I'm mm-hmm. like I pick like one person. Um, so I saw my my friend um, Simba, and then I saw I actually linked up with Kay. Okay, a, yeah, fine, okay. yeah. yeah. So that was cool. And we were on the we we're on the beach in Long Beach, just like chilling. She had a cat with her, it was like on her shoulder, and we're like walking through Long I, Beach, I swear you and all the white people are like, "Oh my God, can I put your cat?" <laughs> No, the cat stained there still. It's fine. Just chilling there. There's like like a like a like a parrot on the shoulder. Oh like, no, nah, that's cat. dope. Like, uh, when did you live in LA or California in general? I lived. And where did you live in? California? Okay, so I lived in Tijuana, Mexico. Oh, but I would drive 
I would drive up. To- <laughs> it's a whole other story. Time out. I- <laughs> but go ahead. <laughs> I didn't know that oh, okay. shit. What? Yeah. So like we were we were hacking life. We like so we stayed down there, um, and it was just like for us a better quality of life. But then we would drive up to LA on the weekends. So it was like a way to be building in LA. We're like going to Beverly Hills, we're going to the parties, but then like we got to just leave and then go back down to TJ. And um it was sweet. It was nice. That's pretty What dope. the fuck? That's pretty dope though. That's fire. It was, it was fire. That is fire. Why'd yeah. you stop? <laughs> COVID. Oh. Yeah. Is that really? Why? Yeah. Oh shit. We were down there and they're like the borders are closing. Um, and my partner's like uh, didn't get her green card yet, so it was like you have to pick a side of the border, and like it, everything was so crazy. So we're like, do we go like deep, like into Mexico, and like just ride out? Because it was like the apocalypse. You remember? Yeah. So we're yeah. like, do we go down and just? I don't know, like chill down there. Like it, it felt like actually a nice idea for the apocalypse. But then my, I was thinking about my family, and I'm like, yeah. I can't like, I like conceptualize not being able to see them if something happens. So we made the decision, crossed over, and then like, she was crazy. And our house was just like sitting down there. We had a, a three bedroom house that was like sitting empty for like months. Just and I had to go down and like, when the borders finally opened, like I went down. <laughs> giant truck and she couldn't cross the border so it was like just me and I filled the <laughs> truck with like couches like it was so full and I strapped it down and like drove across the US border <laughs> yeah, that's pretty fucking crazy <laughs> what bro that's wow. actually insane <laughs> they pulled me into customs like obviously oh, yeah. what do you, you have to check what this what do you have is? everything <laughs> <laughs> Poking around with the sticks, and finally they're like, "You can just go," because they're like, "It was either that or just ship the whole thing." Yeah. Did, were, were you driving across the border so much that like you knew the people? Yeah. Like they knew, they saw you, and they're like, "They're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah." That's it was crazy. like, a, "Okay, it Franklin was... Saint." <laughs> <laughs> that's for no, that's pretty dope. Uh, yeah, I could just drive through the border, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't always, and they were not nice. Like, yeah, I, I, I bet. Border agents have added. To I'm like, why are you talking like to me like this? Like, I'd be like, good morning. <laughs> have my passport ready. Like, have my. I had a. I had a Sentry card, so it was like I've been checked by the government. Like uh-huh. all this extra ass shit, and they're still like, yeah, hey, yo. yeah, so. yeah. So it might have been the hair. Hmm? It might have been the hair. <laughs> <laughs> they might have yeah, looked at you. They're like, they're like. All right. <laughs> she does drugs. Yeah. <laughs> she either has drugs or she's going to get something. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I don't think my, my hair was in pink then. Oh, uh, yeah, it looks like a regular, a regular person. She's like oh, girl she's next cr- door. <laughs> no. Oh shit! No, this oh, oh shit! Okay. <laughs> uh, I guess. We'll start with like photography. Okay. And how you got into that and why you stayed with it. Um, not, this sounded way fucked up when I, when I said it like that, but I did not mean it like that. I, I, I think it's an unappreciated art form. Um, At least not it. It's, it's thankless work. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's like, it, I'm it's making really- a face because it's like, I feel like everyone thinks they're a photographer now. Cause yeah, that's what I was about to say to you. I was just about to ask that because yeah. social media then made everybody Yo, think they're fucking... It's so funny. Like... And it, I mean, it, I I try to be humble in the sense of like, like the tech really has changed and people can definitely take yeah. good photos now, like even with your phone. But to think that it's like not something that you have to put your 10,000 hours in is what's like funny to me. Like there is, I was joking with this local photographer because they posted something on their story where it was like somebody had messaged them and I'd gotten the exact same message before where they're like... <laughs> Like, you tell them your price, and then they go, like, I'll just do it myself. <laughs> and, and, he, and he was upset, but I was, like, the response you have to say is, like, I can't wait to see. <laughs> like, I can't wait Aww. to see what you come up with. <laughs> because Damn. it's, like, I'm not, the price is the price because, of like, all the time I've put into it, like, mm-hmm. mad education, like, mad time buying the right gear, like, playing with gear, figuring out style, all that stuff. So Editing. 
is a whole other editing animal. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i know you know you you edited some of my photos that yeah time. i edited some of your photos yeah yeah um, um so but yeah, am I supposed it. to do the origin story? No, you oh, I mean, to. yeah, I'm, I mean, no, I would, I want to hear it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yes, you have to do the origin so. story. <laughs> <laughs> How do we get here? I want to know the backstory. This cop coming to you, so I'm like, like trying to do a wheezy, wheezy cough into the mic. No, um, but you can, yeah, yeah. I, I would talk in uh, a little, yeah, into it. a yeah, little bit good. more, like, <laughs> yeah. Even if you cough into it, fuck it. Oh, clean it. This ASMR, like, <laughs> like just me wheezing. Yo, I actually, my fault. This is off topic, but I didn't realize for so long those mics that the, the ASMR they talk into. You know how they look like the whole time. For some reason, I don't know why I thought the shit was a vagina. Like you know the side, you know the Wait, side of it. What? No, no, because you know how the side of mm. of it. I don't you know even know what you, I don't know. I'll put out a screen. All right. I don't yeah, I got the cop belt. That was how. Was that the? <laughs> Was it like the hiccups? You said something wild. I don't know. <laughs> that scared I'm gonna, out of me. I'm going to put it on the screen because <laughs> I was scrolling through. And you know, Twitch, they love showing ASMR shit on the homepage. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but I just realized earlobes. The mics are in shapes of earlobes. And like, girls are like putting their whole tongue in the shits. I'm like, bro, what is going on right now? This is Hey, sweat. yo. Hey, little mama. <laughs> I'm like, bro. Let me whisper in your ear. That's good. <laughs> Make no uh, sense. <laughs> it makes no sense. He's like thoughts isn't here, so I'll yeah, I'll, I'll carry. I'll no, carry the torch. I wasn't even trying to say nothing. Why? <laughs> the first vagina comment. <laughs> I'll say it. No, nah, we we love vaginas. <laughs> we, we definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, origin story. How did you get? How did you just start? The origin story. <laughs> Um, I was thinking about this. I was like, yo, this is a long story because I figured you were going to ask. And I was like, how do mm-hmm. I do this in like two minutes? But okay. First time picking up a camera yes. was I went on this like trip when I was in school and we helped out on a documentary in Ecuador. It was like with an indigenous film crews, um, APAC. And they're like the only indigenous film crew in Ecuador and they're fire and they have their own, they have their own channel and everything. And it's all like decolonizing content. And it was so cool. And we were down there like, this professor got fired, I think, because like he was just hey, doing yo. this shit was so radical and we were just down there like really doing cool stuff. Yeah. So I was picking up the camera and I was taking pictures and like I was, I was like, this is so cool. And I, I came back and I was like, I want to do this like all the time. But I was studying. Um, I was in the middle of a neuroscience degree. I was like in my junior year, I think. So I was like finishing it up. So it felt really crazy to like switch. And I was still in this mindset that like, you have to get a degree and you have to follow the path. So I was like trying to find even like research jobs where I could use a camera. Like it was Mm -hmm. so like, I was still so boxed in. But then like at the same time, I was kind of like working on my mental health and like, uh, definitely working through a lot of heavy stuff. And so like, I, I was like, maybe if I go take pictures, like I bought like a rebel T3I and I was like, I'm just going to walk around and take pictures. And, uh, I liked it. Like I felt really good after I felt like a human being. I was like, okay, so this is a thing that I like, but it still like, wasn't really clicking. Um, and then I ended up When I graduated, I traveled for a while and I went to like Asia and I was like backpacking and I brought my camera with me. Yeah, it was fire. So I brought my camera with me and I started taking pictures and I I was like looking at them. I was like, whoa, like I actually if it felt like I was Mm -hmm. I was doing something. Yeah. So I was. um yeah, getting more and more interested in that. And people were responding. Like, there was, like, feedback. Like, I was posting them on Instagram. People were like, this is really good. It's really good. Um, but I still wasn't, like, all in. And then uh, I ended up meeting my partner, in the one that we lived in, TJ, together. Mm-hmm. And she had a, a bikini line. And then, and this was crazy because I was thinking about this. I So I met her on some crazy shit. And then I came back out to Boston and still wasn't doing any real photography or anything, but I picked a random date to like fly back to like move in to Mexico with her. And it was September 14th. And out of all the days, she's like, oh, that like, if you can get an Uber from the airport, cause I'm going to be at this photo shoot on the beach. 
And I was like, okay. And so I showed up and I had my camera with me and she was like, do you want to do BTS? And I didn't even know what BTS meant. I was like, okay. Like I was like yeah. walking around with this camera. I don't know if, I don't think I had the T3. I think I might have bought like a used, I don't know, some used Canon, um, the Mark III, I think. And then I started, I was like taking BTS and I was like, my pictures are good right now. <laughs> I had never shot a person. That was why this, that's why this, this is like quintessential. Cause I had never yeah. shot with a model before. And so I was like taking a picture of a photographer, taking a picture. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why aren't I just taking the pictures? So I started like grabbing girls from the photo shoot and just like acting like I was supposed to be there yeah. and I ended up taking all these photos and they came out so good and like they ended up being the ones that they used for like a lot of the campaigning oh, shit. all the girls were showing like posting them on IG and like all of a sudden it was like wait you know what I mean like yeah. this is clicking and mm -hmm. and that was where Azusa was super supportive and she was like okay I think you're really good I think you should do this and I was like okay like what does that even mean you know and then she ended up um because she was in that LA model world it was like this immediate access to this like where everyone was trying to be like but it was like right away I was like going to shoots and they're doing like, like the the photographers have like 100k and they're published or whatever and I'm just like walking there like with my camera <laughs> like watching what they're doing and so the level up was really fast um and I just kind of dove head in after that I started studying like aesthetics and um uh, just getting more into fashion photography. Like I didn't know anything about fashion. So I was like trying to catch up on everything, but it mm -hmm. was so interesting to me. And, the, and like that clicked a lot more than all the other stuff where it was just like, Oh, this is fun. This is a hobby. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden it was like, no, I want to do this. Like working with models was like the coolest thing. Cause it was like person to person. And that, yeah. that hit so different for me. And I was meeting mad people. Like, yeah, it was, it was super cool. So that's kind of like how it all started. And then, I don't know. Do you have a follow-up question? Yeah, yeah, I have plenty of follow-ups, but... <laughs> Lead me. I don't know where I'm going. I have plenty of follow-ups. <laughs> um, you can go first. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. No, just shake back off of all that. That's, yeah, that's amazing. Like, it was so yeah. cool. Even being yeah. able to big, um, backpack around, that shit's... Yeah. That's a nah, like crazy. That's yeah. even amazing. That, yeah, those years were jam-packed. Like I was like I was doing a lot. lot. I was oh, like, man. I'm going to live life. <laughs> No, but that's fire. Like <laughs> saying it and doing it two different things. Yeah. You did that shit. Like you actually. Yeah. Like, most people couldn't even think to let me go to Japan Yo, and travel. The I fuck? know. Wow. Here's a question. Here's a question. Since you okay. were in LA, this is off topic kind of, okay. but like since you were in LA and in Mexico, you have to have learned some Spanish. Don't do this. <laughs> hey, yo. Not okay. a little bit. I, uh, I, had, I had my coffee shop mm -hmm. Spanish down, and I had my bar Spanish down, and I had my Uber Spanish down. Like, I was good. Okay. Now I'm in Spanish. It has been a couple years. Oh, okay. so you had to use it. <laughs> and so, like, yeah, if you don't use it, like, it, yeah, yeah, you no, lose no, it. Course. It's That's crazy. And, and, yeah. 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 and, like, I, I joke around because, like, I really do feel like having a beer or something, like, helps. Like, if you're sitting, if I'm sitting with someone that speaks Spanish, like, Relaxing, that's, yeah. those wheels start to turn again. But I definitely, it was way better when I was there. Yeah, for sure. But they still, like, laugh at you. Like, that would, that would happen to me all the time. I would, like, go up and try to, because it's TJ, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's one of the most binational cities, like, in the world. It's very, yeah. like, unique. So, a lot of people speak English like very well. Like a lot of people have been deported, so it's like mm -hmm. they're like, I go up and try to speak Spanish, and they're like, Please, they're stop. Like, I'm from LA. Like, <laughs> here's your fucking coffee. Like, relax. And I'd be like, All right, sorry. You know, so it wasn't. It wasn't like if I was like in Oaxaca or something where it was like culturally you're just more expected to to speak keep up. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, we can run back to like photography and stuff. Yeah. Um, like, how do you balance, like, your artistic vision <laughs> with the needs of, like, the, um, like... The client. Yeah, like, the client. The yeah. client, the model. That's, that's a deep one. I didn't, I didn't know you were going to go there. Man. Like, what? She, we she were, said she studied this we yard. I don't want to know. We were, 
<laughs> no. No. Uh, no. no, I'm playing. Give it's like time. you have your. Yeah, give me a hard time. No. Um, no, no. I this is saying. this is something I'm working on. Um, because at first I was doing it for fun. Like when I was out in LA, like I wasn't really getting paid. It was just like because everyone there is an artist of some kind. They're like, oh, I need like something for my for my IG. I need something for my album, whatever. So, and I didn't feel comfortable like getting paid. So it was just really like, let's just create. There was Mm -hmm. a lot more like freedom because there's no money on the line or whatever. So it's just like, I used to say to people like, what are you feeling today? And they'd be like, I'm feeling like, I don't know, anger or something. And I'd be like, okay, like let's make an angry shoot or something. Like I just would respond to whatever was going on, wherever we were at. And we would just make art. And then when I transitioned into having to like get paid for it, mm-hmm. it was so different for me. And I, I, I struggled with it. Cause I was like, people were coming up with ideas and I'm like, <laughs> I like your idea, but I know a better way of doing yeah. it. Yeah. And like, but I'm like, you're paying me mm-hmm. and this is what you want. And I brought this up and you didn't like, like what I had to say. So I I'm guess give you what you want. I'll just give you what I want. But it definitely shifted. Like, I didn't want to share what I was making as much. Like, I definitely wasn't like running to IG to be like, look who we just made. Because I was like, I don't want people to see that and think that's my creative that's vision, work, work, you know. Yeah. And um, so it was like, it was tough. But then sometimes I would make stuff make stuff that was really really dope and then i also got better at advocating for myself because that's that's the kind of like the lesson is like either like i need to create environments where my creative direction is being taken seriously you know so like it's like you hired me so if i think that this is a good idea like at least let me try it and then if it's not working we can go with whatever you're doing um and also just taking clients that actually like has has the same aesthetic as me um Cause like that, I was I keep getting hired for like super clean stuff, and all my stuff is like vintage grungy. Grungy, yeah. Like I'm trying to like it has just happened. Like amazing brand, uh, great people, but like they, I sent them back this like grungy, like weird mm-hmm. thing, and they were like, oh no, no, no. And I was like, like, okay, like, like what did you, what did you expect? <laughs> yeah, I thought that I'm like, you saw my work, right? Yeah, so, exactly. You know what? Like, but at, at the same time, I was like, you pay me whatever, I'll clean it up. But it's just like. I would like to be in spaces where if I'm getting hired, it's like, because they like what I do, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, I would, I guess what I'll go with uh, your current studio. Take me through, like, the process. Like, your, not Front Street. Your Sasa. Studio. Yeah, Sasa Studio. How did that come to be? Yeah. When, like, when was it? Like, what happened? Yeah. Um, okay, so Sasa Studios was me trying to take a real, like, dive into full-time artistry, so stepping away from, like, like, it was, it was post-COVID, so I was back here, I was, like, kind of, like, alone, um, I was separated from all this crazy LA like lifestyle, but I'd seen so much, right? So I was in all those spaces, like watching how all that art is made. And then I'm just like sitting here in Boston and like, and I couldn't find a studio that like felt like it, like I could actually just couldn't find a studio. Like I've since found out where they all are and stuff, but um, Pure Space was just popping up. I think that was just becoming a thing at the time. And I was just like, okay, if I don't have a studio space, then I'm sure other people don't have a studio space. So I think that like, it's a good idea to make one. Like, you know, like that was the mm-hmm. idea, but then it was like, it, I actually, I had the idea to do a studio and I opened up Google and I Googled like available studio spaces and the exact room that I'm in right now popped up like immediately. It was on Craigslist. And I looked at it and I was like, cool. <laughs> emailed her and she emailed me back and then uh I I couldn't I thought it was like it couldn't be this easy so I tried to like shop around but like nothing else was hitting and I saw a couple other spots and then I ended up in the exact spot that I'm in now um and I was nervous too there was a spot that was cheaper but it was shared but my mentor at the time was like like you need to be brave here and like get the spot that like really fits for you and like versus trying to do some shared space like get get the bigger space it's gonna cost more but just like go for it take the risk and um so I got it but the time I still had my other job but I knew I was trying to transition out of it I was working 
uh, for a law for a law school. Like I was still like on that nine to five wave. And um, yeah, so I was like teetering for like a couple months and it didn't look like it does now. Like I just, I, I got the bean bag and like I made it kind of cute. And then I, and the crazy thing was I had shot in a studio one time before. Like I never, I didn't know how to shoot in a, in a studio even. So I was like buying, I was doing research. Like what, what are good lights? Why, why would I want those lights over these lights? And then I started inviting people in. I just started practicing and like getting better and better at studio lighting. Um, and I started to meet people, you know, and like, so I started to see like, okay, this, this can be like a, a, an intersection, like a meeting ground for creatives. And so it started, like, I started to like build this little creative community, which I was lacking. Um, and especially around photography. And then, um, I think like, so I, 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 when did I lose my job? Somewhere in there. I lose my job. <laughs> When did I get broke? (laughs) Somewhere in there, I was crying on the phone and I realized I had to double down like super hard. I was like, I have to just like go all in. And so I took the gamble and I was like, I feel like if I, I feel like if I make this look really aesthetic, and I fill it with everything a photographer would need. I could probably make a little money off peer space. And then at the time I was starting to get paid more for photography. So I was like, I think I can make a living doing this, you know, like not a good living. <laughs> but I was like, I can pay groceries maybe. Like I was living at, with, at my parents. So I was like, okay, let me just kind of try to make this work. And it took off. It was crazy. Like I was October to January. I th- what year? of 2021 I I flipped it so I like took it from this like kind of bare bones studio space to like what it looks like now so I painted the floors I painted the walls like I I bought all like the cool pink couch I did all that stuff like and I was spending bread too I I was using unemployment money that's it it, it had to be this that was when like every timing is everything yeah it's 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 always like a perfect storm yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah. because it was like okay I got the unemployment money so now I can I have this little bit of wiggle room is keeping me afloat and then I can just reinvest this back into something that's gonna hopefully make money like that was the goal so the unemployment money will lead me towards actual money (laughs) and then uh it worked I was I was freaked out like how fast it worked like um the numbers I was making they weren't crazy but I was just like whoa like this is actually maybe something I can I can do and that period I started to get booked more for photography because more people were meeting me Mm -hmm. so my network was growing and the studio was growing um and so that was that was kind of like a total shift for me and all of a sudden I was like oh I'm a a studio owner and then there's everything that comes with that like because that's people like dealing with people and dealing with like I mean, just like upkeep, things Mm -hmm. like that. Like that's when I started like just chilling to being like, it's 3 a.m. and I'm painting this floor because like there's a booking at 10 a.m. and they're expecting it to look a certain way. And it was like, it started to be like, oh, this is the hustle. Like we're in the the hustle phase. It's not just chill anymore. Um, But at the same time, it was like, this is 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 working. This is something. I like this. Like even when I'm tired, it's still like, it's mine. That was my first taste of like, ownership i guess yeah yeah every time i have seen you you look like you were just doing something for hours <laughs> yeah, Yo, except I for today <laughs> like today except for today literally <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Like, up. paint you all over her yeah, paint all over that, her something's on her that just became my aesthetic i was like i don't i don't have money for new clothes right so if i just always have paint on my clothes and look <laughs> windswept hair <laughs> they'll be like oh she's just a hard worker <laughs> her aesthetic is like she work hard. <laughs> she's a hard worker and people like make content and i'm like my content is just gonna be like me like lugging things like because that is like the everyday like with um i'm, I'm dead that you said i was like tired because like i swear the I, I thought I looked tired after Sasa Studios and then like the French Street project. I was, oh. I was looking in the mirror. I was like, you aged. Like, it was years. right. What was it? Right before y'all opened? Like you guys were 
you made that you had just made the chair that that white chair yeah that was the same day as the film shoot and the one that we shot oh and I had and you had paint <laughs> literally all over you <laughs> walk in <laughs> mad pink my fault <laughs> And I was just like leaning in it. And then when I came up, I was just, it was a mess. And yeah, I have no shame. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go meet, I'm going to go meet these people right now. I'm just yeah, like shaking hands. And like my hands are absolutely covered in pain. Hard work. <laughs> like, yeah, and it's funny because it was on my shoes all the time. And everyone's yeah. like, oh, are those Balenciaga? <laughs> I was like, I no, these are like Forever 21 covered in paint, like boots. <laughs> <laughs> A fashion icon. Um, <laughs> with your studio now, uh, yeah. have you ever like, well, from that explanation, it doesn't seem like it, but have you ever thought of like, maybe I want a new location or like. We have to have or, a new location. Or like, okay. What do you mean? The French Street Project? No, not French Street. I'm oh, no, both. but both of them. So that's... Your studio, yeah. Okay, another origin story. Because I was like, people don't know how everything happened. So Sasa I, I Studios is getting... No, you don't. Oh, it is. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Ben, and I work around the corner. You don't know! Okay, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead with the, with the Sasa Studios. Sorry. <laughs> 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 It is. I don't know. You probably do. You probably, <laughs> probably know exactly. What I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. I just want to. I want to be mysterious. <laughs> um, I can hear myself wheezing. Okay, so Sasa Studios is getting knocked down. Okay. Oh. But this is crazy because both studios I've entered into the lease knowing that it's getting knocked down. But like Sasa Studios you've had for longer. They told you like, oh, this is getting knocked Which down. Which is years. why I was so ballsy with French Street because I was like, I've seen how this construction shit goes. And like they told me like you got like a year or two. And I was like, okay, like that's enough. I'll see where I'm at. You know, I, I signed a year lease and then I was like, that's actually cool because I have commitment issues. So I was just <laughs> like, I'll just like yeah, see I'll just where be I'm out. At. Yeah, like that's fine. I'll be out and I'll just figure out the next thing. Like I actually liked that because I was all I'm gonna I thought I'd be back in LA by then. Yeah. I was like, so, um, yeah, so that is getting knocked down. But I was, like, trying to figure out what's next because mm-hmm. I didn't, I was like, I don't I don't know. And it, it seemed like the market, which is why it was so crazy that I found that space to begin with, like, going back to that story because mm-hmm. I found it, like, in one Google search. But yeah. then I, when I was trying to find a replacement space, I was Google searching for, like, months, 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 and, like, nothing was coming up. There's no spaces like that in, in Boston, like, 119 is a very special building, but it's getting knocked down. Um, oh, there's a lot of construction on that. Sh- now, I, now that I think yeah. about it, there's yeah. a lot of construction over that there. And it's crazy because like- everyone's like, what's it going to be? And I was like, luxury condos. And I was, For what? <laughs> and I, was like, I was actually being a dick about it, but it, I think it's actually going to be affordable housing. Oh, affordable housing. So I was like, that's okay. kind of cool. And like the owners are uh, of it are like, suppo- like they thought they were doing a good thing, but they, I don't think that they realize, realize like you're displacing a hundred artists and they're not going to find anywhere else to go. And, and that's the, and that's so tough because yes, Boston needs affordable housing, but yeah. like, we also need culture. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we lack so much culture. Yo, so literally. Like, when you displace artists and you push them all the way out to Lawrence, yeah. to the Nair studio. Yeah, Lawrence. Because yeah. <laughs> everyone's it's like, like it's well, so have rude. you thought about Quincy? Have you thought about Dedham? Exactly. And I'm like, they're why rude. are we so settling rude. for that? Yeah. That's bullshit. Like, it makes me so it's mad. I'm like, there should yeah. be spaces that... Close and, to home. Yeah, and like everybody knows that the city knows that. Like they need they they're talking about it now. Like they're saying that they're gonna like buy up schools and convert them into art spaces. But the the old high school should have been that. Yeah, it's literally they're using it for nothing. Yeah, so that's what they're saying. But it's just like it's so late, like in the game. So the problem is every, all the artists are getting displaced, and it's like where do we go in the three years uh-huh. it takes you to make this conversion? So. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, you go set up a spot and Lowell, you're not coming back. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where it's like we need more, like, awareness from the people that actually have power, like, beforehand, not this, like, retroactive. Yeah, for sure. Um, Yeah. 
So, cha- so you, okay. <laughs> do you have an idea for a change? So you don't have an idea for changing location? For well, so also. so that's what. So you don't. No one knows the story. Okay. So okay. let me tell the story. So I was I like, know the story. Oh my god, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna be a bartender. Mm. <laughs> Wait up! How did, we, how did we get to bar? How did we get to bartender? No, I don't no i'm like this is i was panicking i was like i don't know what to do like i'm gonna get kicked out i don't make enough money I'm, and like my friend was bartending she was making racks yeah, and I, was, I was you know I that money make, looks good you know what's crazy i yeah i just that, yeah, it looks good that <laughs> money looks good i'm like damn you made a thousand dollars like in a night yeah like it's like it's yeah crazy. so i was like okay like i started thinking like in scarcity real quick once i saw that money so i I, I went in for this interview and when I was there, they're like, tell me about yourself. And it went like, kind of like this. Like I was like telling them my story and they're like, you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met anybody that's doing what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, I'm sitting there and I'm like, please stop. Oh. <laughs> and they're like, you're so great. Don't ever stop. And then they like, they're like, we'll hire you, but they're like, you have to work like five nights a week. And I was like, I can't do what I'm doing if I'm doing that. You just told me don't ever stop. And you yeah. told me stop. <laughs> and they're like, well, we'll try to like accommodate it. No. And I, I don't know. So I, I left and I, I was like, I was pissed because I was like, why does the universe do this? Because I swear like the universe like, wants me to be making art and making mm-hmm. art spaces like it tells me that all the time like mm-hmm. every time i try to stop it's like we need you we- back. <laughs> come back <laughs> like throws me a little bone so i believe no yeah. legit like literally. that happens literally, it happens literally. All the time. so i'm like all right so then i like, was like lying there and i was like what do i do so i was like i have to do business brain right now and so i was like maybe i Cause I just needed money and I was like, I can't, well, so that's the whole thing. I needed money because I can't afford another space was kind of how it worked because yeah. the spaces are just so expensive. Mm-hmm. But I was like, maybe if I, um, maybe if I open up another studio and do like a different aesthetic, I can like, I, I was thinking about doing it in my, in 119. I was like, I'll just run both of them mm-hmm. and make money. And then maybe I'll be able to put down on like another one. Um, but then once I made that decision, I opened up LoopNet and like the the French Street was like sitting on. What'd it. you say? LoopNet. LoopNet. Um, okay, okay, okay. LoopNet. It's a <laughs> <laughs> it's commercial property rental. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought if you said look, something. Else. Yeah. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> crazy. No. I thought you said something crazy. That's, That's why I was like. <laughs> you repeat that. <laughs> Either way. <laughs> Clarification or soundbite. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I opened it up and the French street was on there. So that's when I started to shift and I was like, okay, let me see what a bigger space looks like. And so now the goal is just to make one space actually with Artie. Mm -hmm. And like, I want to just like, we have to, cause I can't do another small space. So it has to be like a big space. Yeah. And and it was, and yeah, Artie is kind of like the perfect person for it. Cause like, yeah. like we were also trying to do something with Artie yeah, and then it felt, it fell through. I won. Just no, whoa, no. <laughs> you, you, it's, you won because someone else beat us to a lease. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> because we already had it locked in. Yeah, we had it locked in. The space was locked. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but, but not. <laughs> I didn't even know that. I'm like, yeah, yeah it was in the amazing. same, so it was in the same building as their, as AM. It was uh-huh. the, it was the, the big, the big ass room yeah. that nobody isn't still, even though the lease has been bought. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Really you know what's crazy? I was going to tell you this. I, <laughs> maybe now that I know that you were going to work with him, but I found Artie in a sense. I was already going to AM, but I was just going and like partying and being stupid. But yeah. I was like looking around and I was like, this is really smart. You know what I mean? Like I was appreciating it and I wanted to know the brains behind it. And then you guys did the interview and I watched it and I was like, this dude's smart as hell. Yeah. So you found Artie through us? Yeah, I plotted it. <laughs> yeah, I like that. You I plotted like on that. us. Yeah. I was so, like, yeah, yeah, so yeah, absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't know I was stealing him. I but no, nah, you weren't like, stealing him. And it's funny because that's when we were in that talk for that thing. Yeah. We actually started because of that. Like yeah. there's a big break 
that we took in, in the middle, that's all we could talk it about. It was a that. good interview. It was actually, it was good. It's one of our better ones. It's one of our better ones, clearly. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, he, he was just spitting. I was like, wow, he, he, I saw the growth and I felt like really aligned with that. I was like, oh, I feel like I, we have similar stories. And then like, it was crazy because I hit him up that week well i hit up owen and he was like no this is an already conversation yeah. and then he he For passed sure. the phone to already basically and then me and already were like in one week planned the whole shit out met That's how he signed is, the lease i found lease. out his last name while while i was signing the lease yeah i still don't know it uh, well actually no i, I know marissa yeah but like he uh <laughs> it's like ultimate trust it was crazy he, he very much is like you want to get it done now? Let's do it now. Yeah, call yeah. Him. let's go. Yeah, like, call literally, him. we we left for that place and he, and then like toward the place Monday. Yeah. We toured the place Monday when we left the interview. We were like, we that was on like a Friday and we yeah. toured the place Monday. It was like, bro, he's so about it. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Get that done though. Yeah. Still, yeah. Maybe we'll join the next one. We'll see yeah, you guys yeah, yeah. Yo, we're not exclusive. Like, we're definitely, oh, like, oh, everything know. we're doing is, like, let's just all go together. Like, the, yeah. this is, like, French Street is, like, an experiment. It's like, oh, you know. like, can we make money? Can we work collectively? Yeah. Okay, so what next? Because that's yeah. the thing. It's like, you we're wanna, trying to. You want to know if you can work. Yeah, that's facts. Yeah, that was the other thing. This I keep getting lucky with this whole commitment issue thing because <laughs> this is, like, a six month lease. So I was like. So, yeah, you don't even know if I'm plotting on you right now because my next question was, when's that lease? <laughs> no, but when but when, when are you guys like when are you guys supposed to get kicked out? So like, I'm just trying to figure out more so, so June, for like June thirtieth. Oh, June. Um, is when the lease ends. But oh, he was like winking that we might have longer, but it's not. Uh, it's not in stone. So oh, by the time I'm this thinking comes by out, September. I'm thinking. Well, this not nah, <laughs> this is gonna come out like first week of may we'll probably maybe know by then of, if we could because if we can get a couple more months we're trying really hard to get a couple more months damn yeah yeah i was gonna ask like like if there's like if there's like plans to extend if yeah they, if they, we're if doing they, everything we can like i'm being yeah. very vocal that like um like usually it's like move in silence you know but yeah. i'm like no we are we're when you come to Front Street, like the money is going towards a new space. Like mm-hmm. everything we're doing is the new space. Like I'm like taking all the Sasa Studio stuff towards a new space. Like we're just really trying to get into a position where we can we can put down on a space because realistically we're not going to get a deal like we did for Front Street. Maybe we will, but like we probably have to position ourselves as like we're here, we're a business, we're coming for a two year lease. This is how much we can afford. This is what the business plan is, and so we're like. We're we're prepping that all right now. Sorry. Yeah. 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 That's dope. Yeah. Um, do you have any big like events planned for French Street? Like for like the closing, I guess? I've been thinking about that. We have a list of like ideas that we really want to make happen by the end of it. Um, and it, yeah, I'm like, I don't want to say stuff that may not happen, no, but absolutely. like we have a bunch of AM shows planned. Mm-hmm. Um, which is yeah. always fun, just showcasing like local artists, and then the artists that aren't AM. There's a couple of shows planned. I think, my God, I should have looked at the. Name. I keep forgetting the name. It's like now or never. I think is this weekend. Um, but we're not. This is gonna be too late. But it's gonna be like, <laughs> it's gonna be like May, yeah, like May. 5th. But like yeah, so we have a bunch of so shows. This will have been after like the AM showcase on the twenty eighth. I, yeah, so, I know about that one. Even yeah, though you guys haven't but talked about more, it. But there's more. So there's more, yeah. and I'm actually something that I'm really serious about making happen is um, there's there's two raves that are like gonna be happening. Like they're gonna be like uh, one of them with the intention of creating space for like Black queer DJs. Like and the other one is gonna be like um, this collective of DJs and. Uh, there, it's gonna be like Afro house, Latin house. I'm a piano, and like, I don't know, because I just don't feel like there's a ton of that right now. There's not yeah, a lot of space for that at all. There isn't. So that's like, it's like spaces that are hard to find. That's what I'm focused on creating. Mm-hmm. That's the um, French mission. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's just, and because the whole project is wild mm-hmm. when you think about it. We like opened a space, like it was like a blank canvas, yeah. and then we're like, does anyone want to throw an event? And then like it's just evolved, and so we're seeing what people want, and then. We're also trying to be open minded because we've been doing shows that like I never thought we would do uh, with people that we don't even know. Mm-hmm. But we're just like we want to just get the full breadth of of the of the Boston art community just to like see who's out there, yeah, and like see who's out there and like. 
create opportunity for connection because there's, uh-huh. you think, you know, like, Oh, these people are over here and these people are over here. And then they get in the same room and you're like, actually like, you know, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> the, like <laughs> Mello has been gassing the, um, he loved the, uh, the local college bands. He keeps playing his guitar riff on his story. <laughs> he just loves it. And he never, I guess he never thought he, he, he would. would. Yeah. Um, but, and that's, you know, that's like the, I learned about that through thoughts, like uh, watching, I think about him and like the way he found his band and like going over to Berkeley. Mm-hmm. Um, and like as a, as a Boston artist going into the Berkeley like sphere, that was different. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's becoming more and more common, but I was like, that was brilliant, you know? Yeah, Cause like was- having Berkeley artists like a lot of them are super talented like like robbie's one of the sickest bass players ever he was just chilling yeah he was just chilling you know and then now like it's they're making music and i'm like well there's more robbie's there's more people to meet yeah. that are just robbie's chilling and shane's. yeah shane the shane's another amazing yeah. example <laughs> and so it's like okay if these artists are here in the city for a couple of years like why aren't we integrating them into the boston community like why doesn't boston why don't boston artists have the sickest like instrumentals in, yes. in, in the country yeah, like that's right, that's right. we got all the artists yeah, right got, here yeah. we got the musicians we got the people yeah yeah. yeah and because there was um there's another oh i am so mad right now that i forgot his name it's okay. oh no no i feel just feel bad that i forgot his name but he played the guitar at uh thoughts as for letters to you show and i honestly met him that, that i talked to, i met him that day <sighs> You know what I'm talking about? I think I know too. But he's also in- yeah. extremely talented too. He learned like Phil. He never rehearsed with Phil. He learned one of Phil's songs yeah. in, in a minute. Yeah, and it's like he was like, it's like there's so many of those yeah. here. There's chilling. Yeah, and they like a lot. Some of them don't. They're like closed off, but a lot of them like to get into the community. Like mm-hmm. they're they're excited. They're like, oh, because they feel isolated in, in their own bubble. So like breaking out of that bubble is cool as they so they say um but you know i don't know that's the thing you can't force like this is a good idea but can, i can't force people to work together but it's like i can create a space where they may cross paths and they're if the vibe is right the vibe is right so uh-huh. it's more so like that's the type of stuff i think about i'm like okay like what people need to get in the same room how do i create an environment where that feels good versus feeling forced and then and then just like let the magic happen or not happen. And then I'm like, okay, that was a bust. So let's try something else. Like I actually, yeah. I, but so far, like my, my intuition has been pretty good. Like I threw the um, Noche de Diosa is night. Yeah. I wish yeah. I went to that. I you wish, went to it? I wish I went to that one. Yeah. It was yeah. so cool. Yeah. And when I tell you that was, I pulled this shit on my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Samari was so helpful. Thank you, Samari. Like, I, she was literally in Puerto Rico, like making flyers on Canva and like messaging artists for me. And like, we just I just hit up a couple artists that I'd met doing their photos at Sasa Studios. And I was like, because that's when I started thinking about Berkeley too, because I was doing all their photos. And I was like, everyone here is so talented. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, I didn't have I could I wasn't doing shows then, so I wasn't like I'm gonna put you all on my show. Like, <laughs> yeah. At that time, that wasn't even a concept. But then once I had it, I was like, I gotta do a show. So yeah. So we yeah, we 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 had called them all up, but then like we had local um we had local visual artists. Mm-hmm. And so like and then we had all the people that we've met through Friend Street who felt like they might like it. So they pulled up, mm-hmm. Berkeley pulled up, North- Northeastern pulled up, the local community art community pulled up and like everybody was in run room. Mm-hmm. And the vibes were right. At least that's what everyone said to me. Like, I, I think a lot of people really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, so that was confirming for me. But it was also, like, really taxing. So I was like, okay, I can do this. But, like, they're going to be few and far between. Like, just very intentional. Like, the ones I was talking about. Like, I'm yes. going to try to intentionally curate a really cool space that doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And then not. And then just, like, the rest of the time, like, just let other people plan events and stuff. And we're just, like, a space that's versus far. the host. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. that's, always, that's always something I've been wanting or trying to get involved in just creating a space like that for people yeah, yeah. that's we need that that's, that's why we want to partner Ray's really he's really into that yeah Shit. Well, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, we can, we can talk like, and I, and also just oh, like, we we, me and Artie were talking about, it's just like, we're not so worried about like other people kind of building off of our model and stuff, because it's like, we if we need like 30 of 
friend streets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if everybody had it, like was taking over commercial spaces and turning them into art spaces and stuff, like Boston would be lit. so lit. People yeah, would be sick. coming from New York, yeah, LA. Sick. They'd be like, yo, there's the all, there's all these spots popping yeah, yeah. up. I, man. Cool. I think, like, I think that's a great mindset though. Yeah. It's to know, it's like, there's, there's enough to go around. Yeah. You know what I mean, there's enough for everybody yeah. to eat. I mean, I think you don't succeed if you don't think like that, to yeah. be honest. It's like, yeah, yeah, so I'll eat. I mean, like, there's people that go to AM Studios and they'll also go to yeah. Zen Studios and they'll also go to Phoenix Down. Yeah. And it's like, they'll go everywhere. It's like, doesn't mean we can't all eat. Yeah. yeah. But I attribute that to, like, going to other, like, tra- all my, like, traveling and stuff. I'm grateful because that's when I saw, like, like when you were in LA, you're, like, bouncing around to, like, all these different creative spaces. It's not yeah. like there's one space and yeah, everyone exactly. goes there. Like, there's so many in their niche. Your and- space is popping over different. there. Yeah, your yeah, space is crazy. Over yeah, there. it's Yo. yeah. So I you're like, there's say. no room for like, like. I, there's, obviously, people are competitive, but it doesn't make sense to me out there because mm-hmm. I'm just like, there's just so much. So mm-hmm. I, I'm, I, if, if you want Boston to look like that, then we need so much. And like, yeah. that's how my whole thing is like, I don't want people to feel like they have to go to New York and LA to get that experience. Like, that's my grand vision of like, you don't have to leave Boston forever to make it as an artist. So then I go yeah. back to like, so how do you solve that problem? Like, make spaces for artists so that they don't feel like they have to leave. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm like, I, I want, bunch <laughs> you know yeah. like that's where exit galleries fire boston funk's been like mm-hmm. supporting us there's like i heard about nft space i haven't been there yet been there. but there's like a lot of spots popping up i was just at nosa gallery in roxbury like mm. it's like a little bit of a movement right now there's like a bunch of like so. people our age that are owning spaces that's and it's yeah. really cool and like everyone i talked to is like kind of on the same wave that's you know dope. a little bit different but like yeah yeah that's dope yeah yeah Let's get it. I don't know if you, uh, if you have another question um, that you were about to ask. No, that's no, right. no, I was about to ask. So. Okay, I, I, I got, um, I got something that are a little more lighthearted um, <laughs> to take us out. Look, like, like, not as, not as like <laughs> oh, in depth. Yeah, go ahead. I got something. Go first. Some How did you and Thoughts meet? Okay. Oh, the Thoughts story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. give us the Thoughts story, it's too. Well, these I'm th- calling him Caleb. Yeah, yeah call him Caleb. I call him Caleb. Yeah, I call him Caleb. Caleb yeah, I call him threw Caleb. himself into a window, and I was sitting on the other side. I was like 2017. I was sitting at Clover, and this man was like... <laughs> <laughs> concert comes back i'm still there doing work or something and he's like you're still here and he like comes inside and he's like i'm, I'm thoughts <laughs> he's like i'm making a music video you want to see <laughs> shows, that's, that's shows. my thoughts for you so you want to see it it's <laughs> <laughs> not even his voice at all <laughs> you want to see my video <laughs> he's gonna kill me um but yeah i was like oh it's a cool video but i was like i'm never talking this person <laughs> I knew it. I knew you were thinking that. I think everybody thinks that with the first movie. Oh, it's crazy, man. Um, who just like he threw himself into the window like crazy. And um but so this is where it got weird. And okay, I had this phase in at 27, 2018 where like I thought everything was a sign from the universe. I've mm-hmm. since like discernment is an amazing oh, yeah. And everyone should learn discernment. Yes. But I was like well, that's a. I, I still think this was a sign, but I was like the type like I ran into some guy that I'd like met on Tinder or something, and I was like, "It's a sign." <laughs> like it was not a sign. <laughs> like the voiceover, like in fact, it was not a sign. But yeah, so with the, with Kylev, like the next day, mm-hmm. I sure. was yeah. what? I'm saying he's the type to hit you up. Like no, he, he didn't hit me up. Right. He didn't get my number. I think we swapped IGs, maybe. Of course, yeah. you know he had to leave with something. Yeah. So I was like, you need on my IG. Yeah, he um, always got to leave with something. But yeah, but I go, I go to the gallery. I never go to the gallery ever, ever, ever. And I walked there because my Apple computer broke. And I need to go to the Apple store. And I'm like in this, I'm in the the mall. And I look and I'm like, is that that kid from yesterday? Like, what the fuck? How is this 
this possible? And then I go to message him because I was like, I'm, I was curious. Like I said, everything's a sign. Yeah. So I was like, I have to message him. And IG was down. It was weird. So I was like, okay, whatever. I'm leaving. And then IG pops back up and my message goes through and he like calls him. He's like, it was On me. IG? <laughs> it was me. It was me. That Where is are God. you? That is God. So come running looking. Where are you? Where are you? And I was like, I'm on a bench. And so he came out and he was just like, I don't know, he was thoughts. He was funny. He was and I was himself. like, I was like, all right, all right, dude. You know, and like, but uh yeah, and then we just I guess we kept in touch after that. But I was super grateful because he he definitely like has introduced me to so many people. Uh, like who has been that's what everybody like says, people. but yeah. I'm like, oh like he's a statement for that, bro. Like you when you look at your life, you're like, oh it's like, I'm glad I met you. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty convenient. Thanks for throwing yourself against that window, my guy. Like, like he really blessed me. Yo, he, yeah. Yo, his stories are just insane. Yeah. And he yeah. and he has so many that he doesn't have know how to tell he, him, yeah person. i don't know if he does like does he even remember you I don't know? Think he probably doesn't he just laughs he's like oh yeah so he's getting, like like yeah. laugh. like i remember him t- when damien was oh, telling the story about so how he crazy. met him and he was like i didn't remember this yeah he because like that first video that he ever shot i think it might have been the video he showed you was it like street signs and stuff no that's before okay that's before uh <laughs> That might have been the second video, but like Damien, he tied him up in his basement and like, okay, so Damien messaged him. Okay. If you didn't, if you don't haven't watched the episode, Damien messages him on SoundCloud. Okay. He's like, oh, I really like your music. Uh, can I shoot a video for you? And he was like, yeah, sure. And he's like, dope. Um, he bring he sends goes to, he go he sends him the address. Thoughts comes. He's like, all right, I'm going to tie you in the basement and we're going to have like fake blood coming out your mouth. First time you met him. First time you met him. Tied him in the basement. He didn't even know if he had a camera. He ties him up and he's like, all right, let me go get my camera. And he's like, <laughs> Yo, what the hell? And Thoughts just was like, yep. <laughs> This man should be dead. Really. <laughs> His intuition is crazy. He don't care. He's just he's, he's just wild. Winning. Like that's what I'm saying. I definitely was like watching. I tr- sometimes when I'm like in a social situation, I'm like, what would that? What would? Yeah. I've actually said that to me. Because like to no myself. social anxiety. Like there, nothing. there is nothing. I think it's, it, the thing is, he does have it, but him throwing himself is what gets rid of it. Yeah, like, like that, he's you know what human. I mean? like, he probably he does, yeah. but his solution is like so fearless. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, it's like if he if he's done that and he made it out alive, people people still rock with him, then I'm like, I definitely can just shake this person's hand right yeah, now. Exactly. Like, I can get over this, you know? Yeah. So, <laughs> I uh, guess <laughs> to bring it to the lighthearted questions I had <laughs> was it's kind of it, it kind of has to go with French Street and Sasha Studios. Like saying money is not an issue. Like, what is the space you're creating? Like what does it do? What is it? Yeah. And and I want and, and I also want to ask Ray that question and too, because he also is into that. But go ahead, you first. Miss Ma'am. Like, Unless you want to think about it then. No, I was like, I thought I'm this is only ahead. I'm talking. Yeah, you can talk. <laughs> already- <laughs> you can talk. <laughs> She's like, who else is talking? This is my <laughs> Right. Oh my goodness. I okay, I've just been really inspired by multifunctional space. Like I I like making this space was so cool and um getting into design and and space design has been like like mind altering for me cuz like when it came to photography I was like okay I can do this like two to three times a week but like when it comes to like when I'm in it in terms of like creating a space like not running a space but like creating the space I'd never stop like I did 6 weeks straight like 7 days a week like I was in there all hours of the day like just like painting and and like thinking about what's next and like I'm going to I'm going to add this texture I'm going to do this like what could this look like and it was just it was so cool like I was like I'm happy and so I want to keep doing that um but I wanted to expand like you said this so if money's no object like it's really I have stuff to learn before this could really happen and that's a great that's why I think money is an object sometimes because it, it forces you to take your time Right, right. It's like I have to like sit in this little box for a minute, and learn, mm-hmm. and then as I as I develop, then I can get into the next thing. And so, I I want to. I'm really inspired by places like Meow Wolf. Like I have my Meow Wolf keychain. It's 
why it's attached to my jeans like a true <laughs> like a true bisexual. <laughs> <laughs> avocado from now um but i just was so inspired by that space so it's like um and by that collective of people so it's like just interactive art spaces Mm -hmm. um but i i really also am inspired by what we're doing at french street where it's like there's events and it's like and there's like like media being produced so it's like creating this um audio visual experience but then also like having it be functional for an event like i love how like when we really try for an event at French Street. It's like feels like you're in like you're in a movie or you're in a set. Like you showcase mm-hmm. something. Like yeah, that. you're in you're like in a museum. Yeah, like just, and I yeah, love sure. that. And like I wanna do that but bigger and more intricately and more like uh more experience driven and just like get more money, get more resources, get more talent in the room. So mm-hmm. it's like it doesn't have to just be me, but uh-huh. like getting other ideas and like, how can we just make the coolest experience ever, but then relate it back to like local artists and stuff too. So it's not always like this. Cause I, I hate that like the dope spaces are always like super high level. Like yeah, you have yeah, to be yeah. the most amazing artist to be in here. But I'm like, what, like why can't it be like on some local vibes too? Like that's where the, that's where the heart is, you yeah. know? So kind of integrating that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm manifesting. Right. What about you? Yeah. If you have, and money is no object. What space are you creating? <laughs> um, honestly, I'm really big in just um, creating a space where people can come and just grow. Um, and taking what you said uh, with like, once you do create like the showcase or whatever it is that you create, just watching, like, it feels like you're just pressing play and you're just going and you're in the flow of just, oh, okay, this is next. It's like you can kind of picture what's about to happen next because you have it. You have it lined up. Yeah, yeah. already. So yeah. Like, I like. I feel like I thrive in that moment of just like, hey, let me just fi- fix it. I can. Oh, I know what's next. I got this. It was just like in the chaos, like coming out of it. Right. Mm. I don't know. I, honestly, just seeing people grow. I really just want to see people out here grow because, like, everywhere I've yeah. been in my in my sense of travel, it's just like seeing people in spaces where it's like I wouldn't ex- a restaurant where okay we have karaoke night the karaoke night everybody comes to it like people just pull up there just to link just see people sing and whatever or yeah or tonight we have an art show we're gonna sell paintings at the end of the show just bring your art if it's fire we put it up yeah just like some light like that but. yeah which yeah. it, like shouldn't even it shouldn't be like a a novelty yeah. like but in Boston it is, it is. Um, yeah I I think it's it's the what Ray talks about like just about growth in general. Yeah. And what I mean, what many people don't know is that that's how we really got our name is from Ray. I mean, he always uh Kazen was his thing. Okay. Kazen. That's what this that's what this Kazen. is. K, this says Kazen. Okay. Um, and Kazen in Japanese means grow means always improving. Oh, and that's what I mean. So um, it's upside down for you. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't. I don't speak it's in Mandarin. Like, Japanese, Japanese. Japanese. Okay, um, that makes more sense. Um, but yeah, oh, it means always improving, and like, I feel like I, I picked that word up when I was like thirteen. Yeah, and he's been yeah, and that's he's been just like been rocking with it. He's been rocking, yeah, yeah. rocking with it, and like when we were re like reinventing our name because yeah. our first episode, what that wasn't our name. And what, what was it? It was gray area. It was just too like. Great. But I see what you're going for. Like, there's. Basic. Well, okay. Well, but, go ahead. Well, just, yeah. Like, go ahead. the gray area, it's like, there's. There, I, I think that's a space for growth in the gray yes. area. Yeah. But yeah. switching so it's more intentional. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the idea is the reason I wanted to ask both you and Ray is because the idea is we had for this place originally, this room was supposed to be like twice as big yeah. originally because we wanted a place oh we could hope people can just come shoot photography here, yeah or they can do or it. they can do their uh like a colors room type thing yeah for their because we're like it's not here mm-hmm. and we'd love to see the people here yeah do do great things like well, it's like there's I'm just there's well just even so yeah just the podcasting here. and everything there's, like there's just so much that our um <laughs> There's so much that there's so much potential yeah. here. If there was the, if there was support for it, it would have been done already. Um, if there wasn't 
gatekeeping of like spaces where everything's a luxury apartment, even though the ones that are already there aren't full. Yeah. <laughs> like then. Uh, Not. It would be, yeah, and that's where it's like you know no, nobody wants to get political and stuff, but at the same sure. time, like we we need like legislation that protects like puts a puts like a rent cap or something on art spaces or like yeah. s- th- like I said like they take over a space and they're like this is for artists and um, there's I wish I could think of the coalition because there's a coalition that's doing a really dope job at um, at 119 they already saved they can't save our building it's too late but they saved another building that was going to get knocked down it was like I can't think of the coalition but um yeah, they like came together and they're like really fighting for artist spaces. And whenever someone's getting like kicked out, they like come in and they're like, here, like here's how we're gonna advocate and like get them into city hall. And but we we yeah, because I totally think that like if we had more 119s and stuff, being able to get a space. Because even if you're in a space like I like Sasa Studios, like the size of that, mm-hmm. and like converting that into like what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, because. What else is getting knocked down? And Somerville, the the armory, yeah, also getting knocked down. Like, um, it's like eh. the Sound Museum. So, like, there's just a, a million things that are getting knocked down. Yeah. and there's no place for. Which is, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm like, we need we go. need ownership. That's why I'm like, for real, for real, like not competitively. Like, I'm like, like, how do we get people in the place of ownership and like with function functional? I don't know if that's the word I'm looking for, but like. Mm-hmm. like actually able to make money and sustain themselves right mm-hmm. like we need that because all of these spaces are about to go at like the same time yeah and it's like that's real so it's it's not like it's preventative care in a sense that like to to take the time now to like get these spaces where we can and i think it's going to be taking over commercial properties yeah that's where i think because it's not going to be art spaces because they're gone yeah so it's like converting spaces that are like supposed to be commercial yeah um so it's definitely yeah it's definitely something to think about um i got a question for you yeah. okay right. can you share some tips no actually this question is basically based off like like we're about to head out in a sense but like yeah. can you share some tips for me of um or for anybody that wants to take pictures or wants to make some just make a trip feel a little bit more memorable anything that will help me capture a moment mm. when it comes to taking a picture and anything like because with social media we're all photographers now <laughs> help me so out so what you wanna <laughs> do is um so how to take a take just how can good you, photos just, on a trip specifically yeah, on a trip on a trip let's say if I'm on a trip and I want to capture a moment for a sec what are some tips you got for me cause I think with like the moment it's like to me like I I take yeah, like I a <laughs> go ahead go ahead go ahead that would be awful if I didn't but anyway. go, <laughs> but go ahead you got it yeah it's good it's good, it's good. okay <laughs> How you make it memorable? How do you make it memorable? No, I was gonna break down like you. I think that everyone should like spend some time learning about composition and lighting, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because you can't tweak something until you understand it. Like you can't make it like you can't. You have to understand the foundations, and then you can go and mess around and add style to it. So just getting the foundations of of lighting and photography, because that's what photography is. It's like writing light. That's the name. Mm-hmm. So like, I think that people people approach a photo without that basic knowledge. Um, and if they did, <laughs> they would like the rule of thirds, the rule example, of thirds exactly. like anything like that, or like just having a bit more intention behind the photo will guide them. And then in terms of like capturing the moment, like that's where I try to like really look at like, what's the essence and like, what's the story. Right. So, and that's where, you know, you may do, a close-up like say you're traveling or something right and like there's like maybe there's like something that you're bringing everywhere with you there's like i don't know like a something on your backpack or whatever a notebook yeah so like putting that down on a table and like and then like there's the background like I don't know, i'm thinking we're in thailand or whatever you see you see some type of scene and then you see the notebook or whatever and like now you're capturing that and there's a story to it it's like that's been with me everywhere and then now here look this is where we were in that moment but so like close-ups you know but then also like like i like to work in series so 
So here's a little story about that thing that I have with me. Then maybe I'm looking at something in the room of this. I don't know. I think we're in a cafe in this story right now. So like, <laughs> we're in the cafe. Is there something unique that's specific? Like I won't find this anywhere else. Like mm-hmm. grabbing a flick of that. And then hopefully like there's light pouring in or something. And I'm going to come at an angle where the lighting is interesting. Mm-hmm. And then zooming out all the way. Like is it the outside of the the cafe itself you know what I mean so now we've got this like whole story going on and then maybe it's in a landscape and I grab a landscape or I grab a a palm tree Mm -hmm. and then at that point we haven't even if you're friends with you we haven't even done that yet (laughs) and and that's the difference between a photographer and an IG (laughs) photographer (laughs) she ain't even done yet Like, uh, yeah, then we're getting into posing, yes. whatever. But yeah. yeah, it's so it's just a story. But you do that everywhere all the time, and that's how you start to build this like the catalog story. of actually like interesting photographs. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you for nah, that. Was that, was that, that was hard. That was actually that was crazy. Hard, yeah. Did I take you there? You <laughs> no, no, I was no, like, no, wait a minute. No, wait, wait, wait the cafe. Wait, wait the a cafe. minute. We can see the palm trees no, through the window. Like, you zoom up. Oh, shit. We saw them shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real. It felt like, it felt like a fine. short. You were taking me through a short. Yeah. yeah, but that's why people get weird in front of the camera for me. And I'm like, we're acting right now. We're actors in a movie. And yeah. like, so what are Just you saying? Like, what are you doing? How do you feel? Feel yeah. what does that look like in your body, and like yeah. instead nah, of just being like, cheese, that's amazing. taking a picture. Yeah, <laughs> yeah listen, bro, if you ever want to shoot, bro, every single person, like, <laughs> listen, bro, if you ever want to shoot, you know where to find it. Yeah, bro. what? Uh, where do you find you? Know you? What you gonna get? Bro. What is what is your Instagram? What is so? Oh, hi, your so space. Well, I could put your link to your. Yeah, post. so I'm I'm at Sasa Fressa. That's like my photo slash personal page. Um, then the studio slash brand I guess is Sasa Studios and then uh, Sasa Dot Studios and then the French Street Project is the French Street Project um, on IG um, links to Pure Space are on there if you want to book the room huh. um, and yeah and if you want to connect just reach out as though yeah Damn, wow. it was great talking to you this is fun it was really fun uh, was awesome. uh, it was fun it was informative uh Maybe we'll have you back. Nah, we definitely got to have you back. You got to teach me how to we need take you. some more pictures. <laughs> what you talking about? We need you when Dots is here. That's why. <laughs> no, we're going to fight. Let's <laughs> 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 uh, But thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. See, this is three episodes in a row. Stop that's what fucking with me. <laughs> well, that's what you did, gang. That's what you did. Play. You know the five. Bye.